Amy, as you know, we, we bring lots of, of important uh, political yes. developments to you here on Top Line. Other times, we just kind of gloat a little bit and rub it in. Take a look at uh, these events from Saturday night. Can I say Tiger Blood? Go we can. That's right, it was a, a legit buzzer beater. 0 0.2 seconds on the clock when the, winning, when the winning shot goes down. That's Princeton advancing to the NCAA tournament. They get to play Kentucky. Watch out. Yeah, I, I'm sure that, that is going to be a fascinating, I'm sure, the big upset coming there. The real question, Rick, is I've been hearing some rumors that that guy in the orange Lycra suit it's actually you. I can't confirm or deny it, but it was not John Berman. Uh. I can definitely report that. <laughs> okay, well, joining us now to talk not about guys in lycra suits, but many other things, is Jim Tankersley, who's with National Journal, writes about energy, writes about the economy. Jim, let's talk about, just for a second right now, we had the uh, Congressman Steve King saying that uh, if the government shuts down, it's not really going to be that big of a deal. What do you think about this, especially its impact on what is clearly a fragile economic recovery right now? Well, any kind of a macro shock to the economy would be a bad thing right now, and a shutdown would have a bit of a shock. I mean, we have evidence from the 90s that there was some disruption to national output, to national employment from the government shutdowns, and I think we could see that again. So there's some danger there, particularly, like you just said, at a time when the economy is still sort of teetering on this, this brink of what I like to call escape velocity, finally sort of leaving the recession behind and getting out into the, the low orbit of a recovery. Jim, I want to talk about the, the events out of Japan that have been dominating the discussion. We saw President Obama. He wants more nuclear energy. He obviously wanted offshore oil drilling as well. It, it seems like this is going to have a major impact back home on, on the discussions over energy, and we're going to be looking for new sources anywhere. Well, it's going to have a big impact, and again, just like the oil spill had a big impact, but I, I question how much of an impact um, this in the short term will have, I mean, in the short term it's going to have a big political impact, we're going to have a lot of discussions about it, but remember, it's not like we were about to put a huge fleet of nuclear plants online anyway. If anything, we're talking about 5, 10, 15 years down the road, and the reason for that is economics. It's just not really cost effective right now to bring a lot of uh, new plants online, especially not without government guarantees. So that's where the debate turns now. Should the government be guaranteeing um, these sorts of construction, which again, people are going to be more concerned about now that we've seen what happened in Japan. But we have short memories. I mean, look at what's happened with the oils, but we've, we're already back to drilling. Uh, lots of calls for more drilling <laughs> again, less than a year later. And it would not surprise me if five or ten years down the road, once we really start debating in earnest, bringing a lot of new plants online, w whether people have sort of dismissed and moved past what's happened to Japan uh, this week. But, Jim, do you agree, though, that the while the oil spill is certainly very destructive, does not have the same sort of power in terms of intimidation as nuclear uh, issues do? Well, I mean, it depends on where you live. I mean, for a few months there, you remember that the nation was watching the spill cam every day, and there's uh, the, the huge images of oil sheen across the Gulf. I mean, if you lived on the Gulf Coast, there were big concerns about oil washing up on your shores. It's the same thing, I guess, if you live in the shadow of a nuclear power plant. But a lot of Americans don't, and a lot of Americans don't live in what they think are earthquake zones or on fault lines. So if you're looking at good ways to bring more power online, um, that I think it's going to be a debate still, uh, especially with the way that we're seeing coal sort of moving out of the picture in a lot of ways in terms of new plants. That's not to say that, that there won't be fierce debate about this and that right. the specter of a, of a nuclear accident is not going to be raised again and again just like it was after th Three Mile Island, but I, I would be surprised if this has such a huge transformative impact uh, on the discussion as, as we might be expecting it right now. All right, Jim Tankersley from National Journal, thanks for being here. Any chance that this is going to spark a, a, we'll actually have a national energy policy out of, out of all of this, Jim, real quick? Uh, I would highly doubt it. <laughs> oh, all right, there you go. There Bold predictions go. Yes. there. Jim Tankersley from National Journal. Thanks <laughs> thanks so much. Appreciate it. That does it for this edition of Top Line. Twitter.com slash Rick Klein. Twitter.com slash Amy E. Walter. It's Tiger Blood. Tiger Blood. That's right. right there. Watch yeah, the it was pretty good.